On today's episode of Snoots, Boops, and Fursuits, we'll be meeting with people from Lemon Brat, one of the biggest fursuit making companies, Hale Lunifer, a smaller fursuit maker, and a local furry to talk about fursuits, the furry fandom, and maybe help clear up some misconceptions about the furries. So, stay tuned. Fursuiting, I want to say it's still kind of like cosplaying in a way because you are still dressing up as a character but you know people when they think mascots they think you know big animal characters or the wieners that run around in Brewer Stadium it all it's all kind of like synonyms they're all still relatively the same thing um, I would say it is in a way cosplaying but cosplaying to me at least is more referencing off an already pre-made like fan media or like some kind of media um, character while fursuiting it's usually your own character. The furry fandom is full of creativity, artistic styles, and interesting characters. Chris aka Icy Paws is a local fursuiter who has agreed to meet with us to talk about his experiences and inform us about the fandom and what it truly is about. I want to say that I got into the fandom from probably from old cartoons like Tom and Jerry, um, Looney Tunes, things like that, because it's all anthropomorphic animal characters. Anthropomorphism, I believe the technical term is a uh, animal or some kind of object, maybe an inanimate object that has human-like characteristics. So when you take Bugs Bunny, for example, he walks on two legs, talks, um, has hands, opposable thumbs, it's more like a human. People in the fandom often use their own OCs or original characters as a way to escape or give form to their problems and try and help cope with them. Icy to me originally was who I wanted to be. Um, he was more outgoing, he was more comfortable, he was um, more body positivity. And as a young kid, I got bullied quite a lot for being gay or being fat. And it, it was very hard for me to go around. But um, being in the fandom and being around so many supportive and um, positive people, it's let me um, go out and be myself or be the me that I want to be. Um, Icy originally uh, was that coping mechanism for me to do that. But nowadays, I would like to think that Icy and I are kind of one and the same. Um, the only difference is in the backstory I give him. It's all fantasy based and obviously we don't have that in reality. But otherwise, Tim and I have very similar personalities. In the fandom, people are able to express themselves in ways they might not be able to normally through the use of their own unique costumes. People use fursuiting to get out of their shell because sure, st it's still them who's going out, but having that safety net of having this mask on you or having this kind of, um, this character, this mascot, this cosplay or whatever it is on top of you makes them feel a lot more confident because to them sometimes, it doesn't feel like it's them going out and doing all this wacky stuff. It's more so the character or the one that they know is the person to do that. So if they have their character um, set to be a lot more outgoing, let's say for example that the person is very shy, they don't really want to go out or do this kind of stuff, or they're not really prone to give people hugs or things like that, um, but their character that they make is more so like that. It's what they want to be. Some people are like that, some people aren't. When they have that fursuit on, when they have the character, they're playing the part, they feel like they can be that character and it helps them feel more intact with themselves and makes them feel more open and more comfortable. And then that usually translates to how they feel in the future without having the suit to help, you know, do what they need to do. 
fursuits are different for each people. For me, it's a fun way to get out, um, do something that isn't exactly quite me, but it's still me doing the actions and I feel more comfortable doing it. Uh, for some people, it's a coping mechanism. For some people, it's a way for them to get out and break out of their shell because they have this safety net, this safety character that they can feel comfortable being and not actually being themselves while going out. Um, there's so many different kinds of fursuit makers out there that make just do wonderful jobs. The people that did mine, um, people like Lemon Brat, More for Less. I know a couple other people that have uh, a couple other friends that have different kinds of fursuits. Um, just there's so many different kinds that portray to what they want, what they feel is more comfortable to them, and just however they want to envision themselves as, as a fursuiter. A lot of people can get their different kinds of fursuits um, by independent makers or makers that made more of a business out of it, like they've gotten a good amount of people to help them out and make one kind of company out of it. These are very, very expensive, but you can find them anywhere. Um, I know a lot of people sell um, just individual fursuits at conventions as well. Um, some people raffle them off. Um, one of my closest friends got a fursuit recently at the last MFF in 2019. Um, he bought it just on a whim and he loved it. He loved every second of it. Uh, he was very happy just to even get one. Uh, I've never seen him that happy before. Um, it was adorable. But, you know, you can always get them at conventions as well, even if it's just like a base, like, here's a regular looking bear or cat or wolf or here's one with kind of fancy colors, but it's always there if you don't know the kind of character you want to make or what kind of fursuit you want to get. It's kind of a basic, here it is, try it out, see if you like it, or try this one out before you dedicate to getting one that is specifically one of your own characters. Fursuit making is a very long and time-consuming process. Hale Lunafer is here to talk about her history and how they discovered the fandom, as well as what sparked their interest in starting their small business. Uh, I started with cosplay, so I was getting into making a cosplay for Lady Rengar from League of Legends. I couldn't figure out her paws, and I kind of just went down a rabbit hole and then started making paws. I do mine mostly for fun, so when I have the free time, I, I'll do it. Or a lot of the time, the reason why I like working on fursuits so much is because for me, it's therapeutic. So like, it helps with depression and stuff. So I don't, I'm not really gonna charge somebody a whole bunch because I'm doing it for myself. Hale Lunafer specializes in fursuit paws but has been working on fursuit heads and aims to continue to improve. I honestly think fursuits are meant for like anybody who wants to wear them. Um, I wouldn't really target them towards anybody because everybody in the furry community is so different. There are many different types of fursuits, as well as different styles among them. So for fursuits, there's of course the people who just get the heads there's the mini partials, there's the, the full partials, then I think it's the three-quarter suit, and then the full suits. Or there are people who just get, you know, the heads, arm sleeve, paws, and tail, and then they just wear regular clothes. Hale Lunifer has been making fursuits for about three years focusing mostly on paws, but she has been learning how to make heads, as well as hopefully making a full body fursuit one day. I think one goal I'd like to accomplish is being able to make full suits, because at the moment I can only make like full partials. I would like to be able to make like an actual full suit. So like I'm getting my first head soon and I'd like to be able to complete it. For those interested in learning how to make these suits for yourself, Hale Lunifer agreed to share some of the materials that she uses for her heads and her paws. When, when I start making paws, I usually just start out with like tracing the pattern. And I think that's one of the most like, most like lengthy parts because when you're tracing out paws or anything, I guess for fursuits, um, it takes a really long time, especially with fur. 
because you, you have to be really careful when cutting out the fingers and stuff like that. I'd say that would be the most difficult part for me is cutting and shaving fur. So a lot of the time the price also goes like up depending on like materials that are used. So like I, I use a lot of high quality materials like uh, Big Z Fabrics. They, they're one of the biggest um, uh, like fur suppliers that I shop from. Um, and their stuff is really nice. And I wouldn't use lesser fur on my like stuff because I want the product to be nice. So that reflects a lot in the price. So as an example, when I'm making paws, I've had a couple times where when I was shaving down the fingers, I would shave the fur too, uh, just too low. And I'd, I'd get to the point where I was like, yeah, I'm not going to send anything out like that. So I'll be like, hey, you can have these paws for free. I'll make you a new one just because I don't want anybody to have something that they paid money for to be like lesser quality. So depending on like what style fursuits or fursuit heads you're making, I would say a lot of the material that goes into them is, um, of course, fur, uh, upholstery foam, uh, lycra, or other people use other stuff, um, minky fleece. Uh, I use 3D printed eyes now. Um, there, there's so much that goes into heads. It's a lot of stuff. For those of you interested in getting a custom fur suit made, you can always look into getting a commission but be sure to do your research on who to buy from. I would definitely say when, when looking into getting a fursuit, you really wanna like, like look into who the maker is, check out if they've had any issues in the past, or just like make sure you're getting your money's worth. Lemon Brat is one of the biggest fursuit making companies in the US. Their co-owner Bits, head seamstress Mary, and commissioner liaison, as well as hosts of their live streams, Roman, sat down with us over Zoom call to share their works and their furry stories. As far as like starting with Lemon Brat, I mean, we used to, like the, the same group of people of us that run it used to all go to the same conventions together and it was just kind of a like right place, right time kind of thing. Our, our current focus is really like growing our online presence because we we weren't nearly as I guess as like public before like we didn't we didn't used to post a lot we didn't used to to do any streaming or things like that and so we've been we're really growing and really like aiming over the next several years to have like just keep keep growing our social media get some YouTube content out there get some more twitch videos out there and just keep keep growing and keep having fun. So we started as a company in like 2013, but we really started doing fursuits in 2015. The goal at the company is really to appeal to everyone, but I would say like our, our largest audience is probably people between the ages of 16 and 35. Um, me personally, my first introduction to the furry fandom was actually Midwest Fur Fest 2013. That I had, I had gone with a with a group of friends who were all they were all interested in going and were like, hey, you know, I like I'm kind of into this thing. How do you feel? Would you would you like to go? And I was like, yeah, sure, you know, I'll go and check it out. And I just I fell in love with the fandom after that. A big a big part of it for me was really just like the community, um, like the the groups of people that I met going to that that first convention. Like everybody was so so friendly. There were so many like like minded people with similar interests that what I had that I just like really, really got along with and we all just kind of clicked. I mean, I feel like to me, probably the difference um, between a generalized mascot costume and a fursuit is probably a lot of people don't view a mascot costume as like a generalization or an extension of themselves. Whereas I know, I know a lot of people um, like a, their fursuit or their fursona might represent how either, either how they see themselves or maybe how they want to see themselves and it gives people the, the freedom to, to experience that. And they might not get the same from just like a mascot costume. Although that could be a good introduction into the fandom for some people.
Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Lemon Bread, as well as millions of other businesses around the U.S., were forced to take drastic changes on how they operate. For Lemon Bread, they took this opportunity to expand their range of content by live streaming their products, the making of custom orders, and overall general shenanigans on their Twitch channel. How the pandemic has changed the way that we operate because for, for us personally, like before, I would be, I'd be gone two weekends every month at a convention. Whereas now we're, we're here, we're like in the same city all the time. And at first it was really kind of like hard to get used to because it was, it was traveling all the time. We'd leave on Wednesday, we'd come back on Monday, every other week. And that was like a big, a big portion of how, of how we did business. It was all word of mouth. You got to meet people in person, hand them your business card, talk to them. People got to see your stuff in person rather than seeing it online on the screen. And then when everything closed and happened, the, one of the first conventions to get canceled was one that we were actually already driving to. So on the way there, we were about three hours out when we got the notice that, Hey, this is actually a a bigger thing than what everybody realized we're closing down due to health and safety concerns. And from that point, we all looked at, okay, well, what, what can we do as, as a business to still give like the same, the same perspective and same, give that same feeling of still having like the, the face to face and still being able to have, have the same interactions with people on an individual level. And that was really kind of where, when we started looking more into like getting more on our social media and stream. Conventions were one of the best ways for furries to hang out, meet, and grow as a community. With many conventions reaching almost 10,000 attendees. I have been really happy to see like growth in the community and growth in the in the company as a whole, like even through the the pandemic, because I know that did change a lot about the way that we just kind of the way that we handle things. For me, the furry fandom means a emphasis on artists and giving artists an opportunity to be creative. Uh, after I graduated from art school. I felt like it was going to be very hard to find employment and the furry community not just offered a way to support myself, but a way to thrive. The furry community are very supportive of everyone, especially when it comes to artists and fursuit makers alike. I had gone to art school and then I went to grad school with the intention to become a art instructor. However, I found the instructor position way too competitive and very hard to support myself and that's when i found the job at lemon brat which the furry community really values artists and is willing to not just pay them for their work but allow them to thrive and so that's how i got into it it really just exists to bring joy to people and in this world it can be really hard to find things like that that basically only exist to bring joy to people. And so for me, it gives me a way to be creative on a daily basis. Um, and then also just have the satisfaction of making so many people joyful with my work. Lemon Bratz head seamstress Mary is responsible for so many fursuit creations, as well as watching over some of the other makers that Lemon Brat has. I would say that I mainly just make the fursuits. I would describe myself as furry adjacent. So outside of making them, mostly what I do is I just support Lemon Brat by being a part of their streams and uh, just being an advocate for furries uh, through my social medias as well. I would describe fursuits as a way to explore different facets of your personality. People create these personas, or persona, if you will. Uh, and people will have multiple personas. It's not just, you know, 
one person has one persona. So they can really explore different facets of their personalities or different things that they, they want to be. And I also think that it's kind of a way for some people to come out of their shell while still being protected by this furry shell. So it appeals to a lot of people who have social anxiety and it's a way for them to sort of get out there and be sociable um, while still feeling sort of protected and cocooned. I make fursuits and because I'm the head seamstress, I make the more complex custom projects that we have. Um, so full suits, you know, the heads, the tails, the paws, all pieces. But I would say my expertise is the very complex wings when fursuits have wings that go with them. I'm kind of the wing master. And we also make custom face masks, which we actually did before the pandemic. So people can have like their uh, animal face that they wear as a face mask. Roman and Mary start in many of Lemon Brat's live streams. They make fursuits, talk about their process, chat with the community, and talk about themselves. Uh, so my responsibilities, I'm essentially the commissioner liaison. I help to walk our commissioners through the commission process, whether that's for fursuits or fleece items like kigurumis, hoodies, etc. cetera. Um, I also handle a fair bit of social media as well as I'm like kind of the main host for our Twitch live streams. Uh, so I'm, I kind of do a little of everything, but those are my, my main facets that I do with Lemon Brat. For me, um, honestly, finding a lot of good friends, uh, that's been a huge thing for myself. Um, also finding myself and my gender identity. Uh, I am non-binary and I go by they, them. And being in this fandom genuinely is the reason I have the space to grow and discover that about myself. Uh, because I had so many friends and have so many friends who are supportive of that and even encouraged me to discover myself. Uh, so absolutely for like LGBTQ plus folks, um, it is an absolutely awesome space to discover oneself. Most people, like Roman, are exposed to anthropomorphic characters or even the furry fandom at very early ages, with things like cartoons, TV shows, and even video games. <laughs> so I was 13 years old, uh, and I was trying to make a Halloween costume of Rouge the Bat from Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, I wanted to make her head though. I didn't just want to have the ears. And so then I started to look into that and I found videos of like the fursuit parades at Anthrocon and big conventions like that. And immediately I fell in love. Roman also gave us some helpful information about commissions, as well as the different types of styles that exist and as well what styles Lemon Brad works on. A commission is when someone comes to us for their custom design. So say they have a custom wolf or custom bird character that they want brought to life as a fursuit or a kigu. Uh, and they actually bring that to us so we can bring that character to life uh, in whatever uh, format they, that they would like. What our specialty is, is uh, in this the toonie style. Uh, where our heads have like very big cartoony eyes. You could look at a cartoon character on the TV and look at one of our suits and say, yes, this is very much in a similar realm of style. Um, there are also plush suits, which are kind of like their fur suits that look like big stuffed animals, like a big beanie baby, um, in which something we would love to offer. It's not something we've gotten to make yet, but they're super cute. Um, and then something that's a little out of our personal realm are the realistic suits. Uh, where there are some amazing makers out there who make these fursuits that look like a, a, a real literal wolf head or bird head, cat head, whatever the design is, they will make it look like it is a like an actual animal, but with like a human body. And it's, it's really cool. Um, some really amazing artistry in that. If you're someone who is on the fence about the fandom, you're, you've heard about it, but you're unsure of it, uh, take the leap. 
there's nothing wrong with checking it out. There's a lot of amazing folks in the fandom. Uh, literally all of my best friends are here uh, in this fandom. So I 110% I say that it's worth it. The furry fandom, its artists and fursuiters alike are one big lovable family. We hope you enjoyed and have learned about a great community. Thank you for watching Snoots, Boops, and Fursuits. Take care.